questions from the audience. Two or three questions from the audience. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, who in the audience has a question? I know it's intimidating, but you just got to step up. <laughs> <laughs> some of you have to have some questions. Right back here. Oh, wow. The May I don't know where to begin. I mean, that was an incredible movie. Uh, you know, working with, Chris working with Christopher Lee was great. It was, I've done five movies with him. We shot in Czechoslovakia at that time. Now the Czech Republic, it was still behind the Iron Curtain. We had the KGB watching us. It took eight hours to do my, you know, to, to glue all that hair on me to make me the blonde werewolf. Um, <laughs> We got, initially, we had to do that because we initially from Hollywood sent, you know, we, we got costumes sent and our director, you know, Philip Mora wrote back and, and said, excuse me, we're not doing Planet of the Apes. These, you know, these were, we, F, we really got ape costumes and not werewolf costumes. So we had to do the best we could. So it was very, very challenging, but we enjoyed it. And, you know, working on, on a location for a movie like that. It was a real old castle. And Philippe Mora is, is a, a very visual director, as you know, so the atmosphere was great. And I really enjoyed doing that movie. I loved it. And I know it's very popular and I and I thank everybody for that loves that. And I have some CDs or what are they? DVDs. I have DVDs with me tonight if you want to buy one. It's um yeah, I have it with me. Actually, some of the of, of all the photos that that Horst is getting set up here, and all the all the stuff that you have, I think some of the most compelling images that you have are the uh, Howling Two, Werewolf Bitch images. <laughs> oh, you mean like the Riffaway scene? Yes. Uh, like in the ending? Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, I went to see that movie in the theater um, with the audience for the first time, and I didn't know what they did. But at the end, when all that came, that constant, you know, ripping of my my dress, your, your and then dress, Christopher making the cross, and then cutting away and cutting away, and me again, I walked into, bless his soul, John Daly's not with us anymore, but the producer and distributor's office at that time, and I said, if you don't cut that out, I am not going to support this movie. And he said, what do you want? Everybody loved it. Everybody loved it. And then he bought, bottom line, he basically told me they did that initially because the movie was too short. So he said, how can we extend it? The best way is, hey, everybody loved that scene. So there was nothing I could do. I was contracted for that scene. From now on, I know that I have to put in there, if I'm going to show my breasts, it's one time. <laughs> and not, what was it, 20? Uh, 73 by my count. Leave it up to you to count. Of course, yeah, you can, you can depend on him to count. Okay. <laughs> I think we just boosted uh, Howling 2 rentals. So just <laughs> right now. Uh, do we have anybody else from the audience that has a question for our esteemed guests? And I know somebody must have a question about the film we just saw, so don't be intimidated. Right in the back there. Okay, uh, uh, statement and a question. First off, I was actually with Philippe Moore last night, and he sends his love. And secondly, I'd like to know if you know whether uh, Boaz Yaquim saw this movie before he wrote and directed the movie Fresh with uh, Sean Nelson and Samuel L. Jackson, because the structure on that movie is so disturbingly similar to this one. You know, I don't know anything about that. <laughs> I really don't. But I want you to give Philippe my love back. And a big hug and kiss if you want to do that. <laughs> but send it for me because I love Philippe. And you know something? Um, the Howling 2 did so well that um, when MGM brought it out on DVD, it just keeps selling and selling and selling, and it's a huge seller. And I said to Philippe, why don't we do a sequel to the sequel of, you know, The Howling 2? And he put me together with the owner and writers, and, and uh, he said, you know what, those rights, we've done seven movies, those rights are so tied up and tangled and everything, let's do a new franchise, and we have a new one now. So Philippe and Gary Brandner, who wrote all the Howling books, and I, we have a new franchise now. So, <laughs> so, so we're not going to see Howling 2 Part 2, but what, what will the new series be called? 
Well, right now it's called Night Hunters. That's a cool title. Um, you get to see this movie um, in a proper screening after it was done, and what were your impressions of it when you saw it? You know something? Um, I saw it when I came out in the theaters. Um, I normally don't like to watch my movies. I don't. I really don't because I'm always very critical and I always have something to criticize myself about so I'm never satisfied and I, I'm really never like myself in the roles and I say that could have been better or that could have been better. Okay, two, two things. Um, one, what was the critical response to the film? And what made you decide to take this role at that particular time in your career? Well, uh, I believe it was 80, 1980 or 81 when it came out. It came out in 82, but I think it had been felt a little before. Thank you, Lars, my, <laughs> my dictionary here, my encyclopedia. Anytime. Thank you. Uh, can you stay in LA? Absolutely. <laughs> I'm not good with those kind of details, thank you. Um, at that time, I had just come to Hollywood. And it was interesting that I was called back from Germany, where I had lived before, um, to do a movie. So first of all, I was happy to do a movie, because it's not easy. When I came to Hollywood, everybody said, what are you doing, what do you want to go to Hollywood for? There's 5,000 actors not working, so what do you think you can do there? So number one, when I got hired, I was very happy. And because I have an Austrian passport, and it was a German-Canadian co-production, you had to fit the criteria, so sometimes Americans are not allowed to be in those movies because of fitting that criteria, European and Canadian. So I fit that criteria, and, and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed that. It was actually new for me because I can't remember when I played a mother before or after. <laughs> many, many, many years, including up until today, and I don't look for those roles, and I always tell them, you got a mother role, hey, that's not for me, I'm not ready for that. <laughs> so, you know, it was different. At that time I thought, okay, it's a role, it's work, it's money, you gotta pay your bills. Um, and I did enjoy it, and, um, and I work with Lutz Scharwächter, Chained Heat was, after that, right? I believe so. Okay, <laughs> so it wasn't because of Chain Heat that I did it. Okay, thank you. But, um, but I also found it interesting. I found it interesting and I said it's, it's, you know, you can explore a little bit and do something else and do something different. And, and, but I did like the fact that she really, I mean, my character really won out at the end because that was important to me. I like playing strong characters, uh, you know, women that are ahead of their game, and, and to me, she was not a victim. I mean, she played along, she tried her best, she did what she could, but in the end, she won out, and I like that. <laughs> yeah. Woo! The, I, I love the game, the scene where you're playing chess. I thought that was kind of like a pivotal scene. And it's a great scene. And if I ever write a movie, I will probably rip that off and use that in the movie that I write. But uh, did you feel like that when you were doing that scene that that was a key pivotal scene in the film? Yeah, I think so. I think it was a, a very psychological yeah. moment. I mean, that checkmate was like, I'm gonna get you, I'm gonna win, you're gonna lose, absolutely. And I think everyone that saw that you know, understood that, and yeah, I love that scene. Yeah, me too, it's great. <laughs> I, I love that whole movie, I love everything. Any kind, anytime light, like, lands on you in a movie, that's great for me. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm so happy that you're here, and I'm so happy that, that you, you decided to honor us with your presence, and then you're actually gonna hang out and sign autographs for this crowd. And we're gonna take a we're gonna take a like a break between movies while you have time to meet Sybil Danning. And uh, and she, I, I am so happy that you've come out to this screening. And we love you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.